Hello viewers, welcome back. Now this uh, video is part of my playlist of uh, basic section. So in the last section in our uh, basic uh, playlist, if you see, uh, we had discussed about the different voucher type and what are the controls that Tally brings in those voucher type. So in the last session, I had mentioned that uh, we will see a uh, few transactions for each of the voucher type. So before we go into the transaction, uh, one more uh, area that I would want to cover is the voucher type. Now, if you see, uh, we had seen in one of our previous session that when I go to my display list of account, and if I go to my voucher type on the right hand side button bar, Tally is going to give the list of all the vouchers. These are the default voucher we saw uh, in the earlier session. Now, uh, there might be a requirement for some organizations to have a user defined voucher type, like how we saw that in Tally, you can create an user defined accounting group. And of course, uh, by default, Tally gives you two ledgers, which is your cash ledger and the profit and loss account ledger, right? And rest all of the other ledger has to be created by the user, right? So similarly, uh, these are the default voucher type that Tally provides. And uh, if the user wants to create their own voucher type, Tally allows the user to create your own voucher type for any of this uh, default voucher type that Tally provides. For example, let us assume. So you have this uh, sales uh, voucher type in Tally by default. For some reason, if you want to have uh, your own voucher type for your different type of uh, sale, for example, let us say that you want to have a local uh, sale as a separate voucher type and interstate sale as a separate voucher type. And in case if you are exporting, you want to have a separate voucher type for export. When come to uh, payment, another example that we can take uh, for a user defined voucher type is the payment voucher type. So by default, Tally gives you this payment voucher type. But if you want to have a separate voucher type for your bank payment, and if you want to have a separate voucher type for your cash payment, you can create those voucher type. Now the question is, why do I need this voucher type? What purpose that it is going to solve? Uh, one, one very simple example that I can give you is that by creating each of this voucher type, you will have uh, all those transactions captured in these independent to voucher type that uh, the default voucher type and also the voucher type that you are creating. So the advantage of having a different voucher type is that it is going to help you in uh, quickly, uh, you know, uh, pulling out those transactions pertaining to those nature of transactions. For example, in case of a sale, uh, if you want to review, uh, review or if you want to uh, view or if you want to check those transactions related only to local sale, then it becomes very easy for you to select that particular voucher type and then get the list of all the vouchers related to local sale and it becomes easier and faster for you to check them or review them, right? So similarly, the bank payment and the cash payment. So that is one advantage that you get. And the other aspect is that uh, when we when we uh, go uh, to the subsequent session, I will also tell you that how you can uh, get an extract of these reports, how you can get a columnar report based on each of the voucher type. So basically, this is the uh, advantage of having an independent voucher type for a different nature of transactions for your organization. Now we will see uh, how do we now uh, create uh, uh, our own user defined voucher type in Tally. So you come to gateway of Tally. Now in the gateway of Tally, the voucher type also is kind of a master. 
right so you go to the master section right either either you can uh, go to ac accounts uh, uh, information where you find this voucher type or you can come to inventory information and even here you will find this voucher type menu right so let me go to accounts and you can go to any of this uh, master accounting or inventory so let me go to accounting info i go to accounting info and then i have this voucher type i can click on this voucher type and now you are comfortable right so you know create display alter right so i want to now create a new voucher type so let's say that i want to create a new voucher type called sales local now i have already created that voucher type i will take you in the alteration mode and i will show you so creation is very simple you just go to create and then type the name of the voucher type that you wanted and you do the other aspects of it so let me just quickly show you uh, uh, i'm going to the alter because i have already created a voucher type so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go to my sales local that is the new user defined voucher type that i have created so i go to sales local so you're going to type sales local here and then this is very important right so the select the type of voucher the type of voucher so since i have already uh, you know selected this particular thing uh, it, it it's just uh, uh, you know uh, skipping that particular thing so let me just quickly show you in the create mode itself uh, so that you know you will you will know that thing so for example let us say i'm going to say sales interstate good enter and now tally is going to ask you it is like your parent so when we created our accounting uh, ledger uh, you remember i said very important aspect that is uh, you have to associate your ledger to the respective uh, parent similarly so we know that default voucher type what tally is provided any user defined voucher type that you are going to create uh, you have to uh, you know put them under the parent uh, type so this is basically a branch of my sales voucher type that i'm uh, creating here so i'm going to select my type of voucher as this is my sales voucher right so this is the abbreviation uh, thing uh, then the, the method of uh, voucher numbering right so you have a different uh, method of voucher numbering uh, one is the automatic voucher numbering and especially for sale it is very important that you have the automatic voucher numbering uh, because of the gst impact so when we come to the gst we will discuss in detail right so one is automatic so either you can set the voucher numbering for this uh, new voucher type that you are creating which is sales interstate here you can say automatic right so that way what tally does automatically once you save a particular voucher the first voucher when you save uh, tally is going to give you the voucher number as one so after saving the voucher number when you go to the second transaction tally is going to automatically give you your next sequential number so that's basically is your automatic uh, method of numbering the next one is uh, it says automatic but then it says manual override so what does it mean so tally will give you automatically the next sequential number but if the user for some reason wants to override that uh, number then you can select automatic manual override and uh, you know the user can change the voucher number during the voucher entry the third option is the manual very simple so tally is not going to give you any voucher number it is just going to give you that uh, space where you will the user will enter the voucher number right so when you select manual voucher now tally also basically you know has another uh, option where it is asking the user do you want me to prevent duplicate number so in manual what happens you know you have to remember what is your previous voucher number and then you have to enter the manual number probably in sequential or maybe in whatever pattern that you want your voucher number but then if you want to make sure that the voucher number is not repeated so in that case you can select this prevent duplicate so when you say yes prevent duplicate if uh, 
though you have selected a manual voucher numbering if you have provided any voucher number uh, for a particular voucher and next time by mistake if you have if you are uh, specifying the same voucher number tally is going to give you a warning saying that this number is already been captured so that is how it is going to prevent your duplicate number right so the rest of it quickly i will show in the uh, alteration mode as so i have done some configuration so what i'm going to do here i'm going to come to alteration i'm going to select my sales local right so here i have selected automatic okay now this advanced configuration we will discuss in the advanced section so this is just the basic session where uh, you the user if they want to create a user defined voucher type a simple uh, user defined voucher type is what i'm going to explain in this uh, session the next one is use effective date for voucher again this is part of the advanced uh, discussion uh, we will we will do that so i am going to cover a more advanced configuration for each of the uh, voucher type uh, in in one of my advanced section where you can you can actually view uh, the advanced configurations that uh, that uh, you can do for a particular voucher type so this is basically effective date is it is going to give you effective date i will also explain uh, why this effective date needs to be enabled and for what reason it has to be done right and uh, the next option it says make this voucher type as optional by default so tally has uh, some non accounting vouchers for example uh, tally has a voucher type called memorandum voucher and uh, you can mark any regular voucher as a optional voucher and uh, tally also in the accounting side uh, tally also has uh, another voucher called reversing journal so we will discuss about uh, these non accounting vouchers so what is the relevance of this non accounting voucher the relevance of this non accounting voucher is that any transaction if you are passing using this non accounting voucher so one is your memorandum voucher uh, reversing journal by default whenever you are saving a particular uh, transaction using these two voucher type any value that you capture in the voucher that is not going to impact your books of accounts that means it is not going to update your books of account uh, again any regular voucher you can convert that voucher into a optional voucher the moment you convert a regular voucher into a optional voucher the values uh, which have impacted your financial statement will get reversed that means it will now take back those values and then it is going to give you the report without the value of that particular voucher type which you have marked as optional voucher so here while creating a voucher type itself tally is asking you do you want to uh you know mark this voucher type that you are creating as a optional voucher so what happens if i if i mark this voucher type as optional by default so the moment i mark this as yes and when i save this voucher type and any time or every time when i am going to use this voucher type for passing the transaction tally will put a label called optional on the top of the voucher uh and any value that you are capturing and saving this voucher will not impact your books of account now the question that uh, some of you might be having then why do i need this optional voucher so very simple uh there are i mean like you know you if you feel that you know uh two use case scenario i can give you one use case scenario is a common use case scenario which companies will have uh, this process or policy so that means uh, for example let us say uh, i have a new data entry operator or i have a fresh accountant who is updating my books of account all right and uh, now as a owner i know accounting but then only thing you know i want to concentrate more on my business rather than getting into updating my books of accounts so i have appointed an accountant so initially i want to make sure that all those transactions my new accountant or my data entry operator operator is capturing uh, i would i would not want them to impact my books of account first 
I would want to review those transactions, make sure that these transactions are captured properly as per the double entry accounting system or as per the requirement of my business. And then I can convert this optional voucher into a regular voucher. The moment I convert this optional voucher into a regular voucher, it is going to impact my books of account. So this is one use case. The second use case, is that uh, uh, any any voucher that I want to enter here, I'm not sure about the impact or I'm not sure about the uh, uh, masters that I've captured in that particular voucher. So in that case, if I feel that, you know, anything that I want to uh, pass the transactions, first let it, let it, I will capture that as a temporary entry. A temporary entry in the sense, it is not going to update my books of account. Then if I need any clarification from uh, the relevant uh, stakeholders, I will get it clarified and then I will convert that into a regular voucher. So this is the requirement, right? So generally you would not use uh, optional uh, in a normal circumstances, but there are businesses where people would want uh, this option so that it becomes easier. Otherwise, you know, if there are wrong values captured, it is going to unnecessarily give uh, a, a wrong information in the financial statement. So I'm leaving this as uh, no. So I'm not going to make this as optional voucher, especially my sales. I'm not going to make this as my optional voucher. Hello, narration in the voucher, by default it is yes. So in, in, in every voucher type, you will see at the bottom of the screen, uh, you will you can enter the narration, right? So and entering narration is very, very important because what I have seen is that, you know, in many companies, they don't enter the narration and later on, you know, I mean, they when they recall that particular voucher after a certain period of time, uh, you know, they are confused. They don't know for what this payment is made or for why this transaction is captured. So narration always really helps you to get a quick recall uh, of the nature of transaction, the purpose of transaction. Okay, so this is going to be by default. And uh, some, some organizations would want to have uh, narration for each ledger. So I'm going to capture... Uh, voucher i'm going to capture transaction in the voucher and uh, what when is it going to be very useful now when i'm going to pass an entry for example let us say uh, i'm going to capture my expense entry where uh, in one particular voucher i want to capture multiple expenses like for example conveyance or printing and stationery where all these are my cash payment so where i don't have a credit bill so if that is a requirement, then you know what you're going to do, you're going to credit cash or bank, and then you're going to debit your expenses. You're going to say conveyance expenses, amount, so-and-so, printing and stationery, so-and-so. Any kind of expenses, you can have multiple uh, uh, you know, ledgers selected in one single payment voucher. So now for conveyance, uh, you would want to capture a narration related to the nature of expenses or the purpose of expenses for conveyance or for printing and stationery or for any other expenditure. So that way, if you enable provide narration for each ledger in voucher, so every time you select a ledger, Tally will ask you to provide the narration for that particular ledger. So that is where this is going to help and it is going to be very useful where in a voucher in your organization, if you have a practice of capturing multiple transactions or multiple uh, heads of account in one single uh, voucher, then uh, provide narration for each ledger will be very helpful. Okay? So I'm leaving this as no. The next is again, this is very, very important. This is kind of a class. Now, if you see here, there is this class. Again, this is part of the advanced uh, section, which I will cover as part of my advanced section. But then uh, quickly for you to have uh, any account as a default account for this voucher type. So what do you mean by that? So now I'm creating this uh, voucher type called sales local, right? So let us assume that under GST now, uh, sales local, uh, if you see, uh, I have to, uh, if I'm a GST registered uh, dealer, I have to charge CGST and SGST, whatever is the rate of tax that is going to be applicable. 
and uh, uh, if you see my previous uh, uh, video uh, uh, i had covered uh, for the advanced section uh, where we were we were discussing about uh, how you can you can uh, you know if you want to charge handling charges or any other charges in your sales invoice so that you know you automatically you know it can start ca calculating uh, the percentage that you specify and also in every every sales uh, local uh, these are your standard additional charges which you should not miss out so and instead of every time going and you know selecting independently uh, each of this ledger tally allows you to uh, you know specify the default ledger uh in in the voucher type so that whenever you go to this voucher type by default whatever ledger that you are specifying will automatically come into that particular voucher so how do you do this so we will take this example in the sales local so i'm going to say uh, enable default accounting allocation right so i'm going to make it as yes and the next option it is asking you that tell me what are the default ledgers that you want to get populated automatically for this voucher type so i'm going to say set alter default ledger yes and now i have already configured this i'll just explain so now the main the the default accounting ledger for your invoices is my sales account all right so again what is this percentage and all those things we will go to the advanced section so sales is i'm going to say this is my 100% and then what are my additional accounting entries that i want to be auto populated for this voucher type so you can read this here so additional accounting entries example tally says you can you can specify your tax ledger you can specify your other ledgers to be auto populated or added in the invoice so what i have done i have just created uh, this uh, cgst ledger now when we get into the gst module in tally we will discuss in detail about all this uh, configuration of your tax ledgers and other thing right so i i have created one simple uh, cgst ledger and this is uh, without any enablement of gst in tally so cgst so now uh, basically tally is asking you how do you want to uh, you know calculate uh, this particular tax so these are the various calculation method that tally provides you so generally i would want to calculate my tax on my total sale so you can see on the current subtotal on the item rate as a flat uh, rate you can specify as a flat rate where you can enter the flat rate of amount and other things right so i'm going to select this on total sale now the basis of value is that what is the percentage that i want to uh, levy or i want to charge on the total sale so my cgst let us say 9% is the rate uh, uh, rate of tax so 9 uh, i am entering here as 9 and then uh, uh, normal so rounding off so we discussed about this rounding off so i'm going to say it is normal rounding off and what is the rounding off limit i want to round off to the next 1 rupee so that is one now this is very interesting remove if zero like for example i have selected that all these four ledgers have to automatically get auto populated whenever i select this sales local voucher type right so i am going to charge cgst 100% i have to charge for every sales so cgst sgst i am going to charge on all my invoices for some reason or for some client let us assume that i don't want to charge uh, insurance right and i don't want to charge handling charges only tax i want to charge so by default what tally is going to do it is going to populate this uh, uh, ledgers in your voucher type so if you don't want it you can you can you know you don't have to specify the amount and if insurance is the value of insurance is zero in this uh, uh, particular sales local uh, voucher type that you are capturing or uh, the handling charges value is zero and now when you are printing it looks very odd for you to have this two ledger name in the invoice with no value right so if you don't want any ledger to appear in your and the moment you save this voucher tally is going to remove those ledgers which does not have value so that way when you are printing your invoice your tax invoice and then you are giving it to your customer so all those default ledgers which you have specified here if they don't have a value it will not print in your invoice 
So that is what is the option. Remove if zero. So tally says if there is a value for this ledger which is a zero value, then tally you are telling tally to remove that ledger. You are asking it not to uh, show it in your saved voucher or not to print this ledger in your uh, invoice uh, printable format. Okay. So CGST, SGST, I am doing the same thing. Right, and then I'm going to charge by default on the total sale value. I want to charge insurance of 5%, uh, which is again my normal rounding and all those things. You are now clear about it. I'm going to say handling charges on total sale. Uh, again, I'm going to, I'm going to charge 2% uh, handling charges on my total sale. And this is what I'm going to specify. So this way, any number of ledges that you want it to be as part of the uh, default uh, ledgers in the voucher type, you can specify them. Okay, so now I'm going to save this thing. Uh, the printing part is print voucher after saving. So in case, like for example, this is my sales uh, local invoice, and uh, let us assume that I have I have configured GST in Tally, and uh, I can generate the tax invoice from Tally itself, and the the all those information that is required as per GST configuration. You will you will get them in uh, tally itself. Uh, we will see that when we come to the GST uh, module. So what this option? If you make this as yes, the moment you save this particular voucher, it will ask you, do you want to print this voucher? When you say yes, so the voucher is saved and it automatically gets printed. Now if if this option is set as no, then you will save the voucher and if you want to print the voucher. Uh, you will have to just press page up for you to from the voucher uh, entry screen itself. When you press page up, it is going to recall your previously saved voucher and then you can say Alt P and then you can print it. Or you will go to uh, uh, the, the, the voucher uh, report, select that particular voucher, uh, get into that particular voucher and then you can print it. So these are the different ways. But if you feel that every voucher after saving, if you want to print it, you can use this option print, right? So I'm leaving this as no and rest rest of the thing is again, it is related to the pause invoice. So when we come to the pause section, we will discuss about these things. So what we have discussed now is generic thing, which which uh, from a basic uh, understanding point of uh, creating a user defined voucher type, uh, this much information should definitely help you. So I'm going to now save this. So let's quickly come now and see what is the impact of this new voucher type that I have created so i'm going to now go to my voucher entry right and then uh, let us say i want to go to my sales entry so i'm going to press f8 now what that does because i have uh, more voucher type under the my parent voucher of sale tally is going to list out all the voucher type that the user is created along with the default voucher type so it is notice here sales is the default voucher type which tally is given and sales local is the new voucher type we just now created. So I'm going to uh, enter here. And if you notice here, see by default, by default, you know, these, these, these ledgers have automatically populated in this particular thing so that, you know, I don't have to every time keep selecting it. Or sometimes if I forget to charge this and I'm at loss, right? So let's quickly see one transaction. So I will take this particular party. I'm going to select my sales ledger, right? And then uh, I'm going to select an item. Let us say item B I have selected. And then quantity is 10 numbers. And let's say 1000 rupees is the value of this particular item, right? And you will notice that automatically tally is calculated uh, all the other things so that it becomes easier, faster, and it is going to be accurate, uh, the other calculation aspects so that, you know, you don't have to do any manual calculation. So this is where the default ledgers are going to help you. Okay. Now, uh, so this is one example of uh, sales voucher. So in case of, uh, let us say, in case of a payment voucher, you want to have a separate voucher type called cash payment and a separate voucher type called bank payment. So how do I create it? So now it is very easy. So I go to, uh, now I go from inventory info. Uh, then I, I go to my voucher type 
and then I select alter since I've already created. So I've created now one voucher type called bank payment, right? So even even in the bank payment, you can you can put your uh, any voucher type. You can have this default uh, ledgers uh, to be auto populated in the uh, voucher type while while using this particular voucher type. So we have discussed about this, and uh, let's let's say in this case I have said yes. And what is that I have done here? So since this ledger is my bank payment ledger, every time I don't want to select my bank ledger. Right. Since I know that I have created an exclusive payment voucher type called bank payment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my uh, uh, bank account and then I'm saving this voucher. So what happens? Let me let's now come and see what happens to this particular new voucher type. So I come to voucher entry. Right. And this is my previously saved voucher. Tally will bring the previously saved voucher. And we know now using your uh, secret number one, uh, F5 is your uh, payment voucher. Now I come to payment voucher and uh, I have already created two voucher types. So payment is the default voucher. Now I've created a bank payment and also I've created a cash payment. We will see what, what change I've done in the cash payment. So I come to my bank payment and then now I want to make a bank payment. So I'm going to make a bank payment. The moment I come here, you will now notice that your state bank of India is automatically selected. So you don't have to select again. So all you have to do is just come here and then keep entering the uh, uh, the ledgers for which the payment is being made. It could be an expenses ledger, it could be a party account and all those things you can capture them. So one thing you have to remember when you uh, when you uh, specify default ledger uh, in, in the mini voucher class, I can say uh, you can't pass this entry in the double, en uh, double entry mode. That is your debit credit. It is not going to allow. For example, uh, we have seen in 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 the previous uh, session in the under the basic uh, playlist that uh, if you want to convert the payment voucher, receipt voucher, and contra voucher into single entry mode and double entry mode, we we did this configuration in F12, right? So this option, right? Even though you see that this option single entry mode is no, okay, tally still will allow you to enter in the single entry mode because of the default ledger that you have selected in the voucher type. So that you have to just remember that. Okay. <laughs> now we will come to uh, cash payment, accounts info, voucher type, alter, cash payment. So in cash payment, what I have done, I have not selected any default ledger, right? So I have specified all this, you know, the automatic number and all those things. So now what happens, let us see when I select my cash payment. So I come to my voucher entry, right? This is my bank payment. So I'm going to press F5 and now I'm going to select cash payment and cash payment. Since there is no default ledger pre-allocated for this voucher type, I have the flexibility of now uh, passing transaction for this voucher type in the double entry mode and also in the single entry mode. For example, if I want to use a single entry mode for this cash payment, uh, you know now I'm going to go, you, you're going to go to uh, F12 configuration. And the second option here, use single entry mode, I'm going to say yes. And now you see, I can now, it is flexible for me to convert into a single entry mode or double entry mode, right? So this is about the, the, the voucher type, uh, user defined voucher type that uh, in case if you want to create for your organization, you can create them. Now, the next question is that, okay, so what change is there in uh, Tally Prime? So is it going to be the same uh, experience that I'm going to get in Tally Prime or is there any change? Uh, as far as uh, the, the, the creation part, uh, absolutely there is no change. Only thing now, uh, the the accessing of your voucher type, there is a slight change, which we will see now. So this is your tally prime. So in the, in the, in the, in the tally ERP, we saw we had this masters. Okay, so in the master, we had this, uh, when we go into master, we had group, ledger and voucher type. So here, you know, basically we have seen this earlier. So there is this create. So you want to create a new voucher type. So under the master, so you select create, enter, and you will see here group, ledger, and voucher type. So you can enter here, and then it will take you to the 
creation of the voucher type. So if you notice here, every option that you're seeing here is exactly as per the option that you have uh, seen in your uh, tally ERP. Okay. So uh, now I have already created. So I, I just go to alter, enter, and then uh, I go to voucher type and uh, let's take this uh, cash payment. So in this ca cash payment, what I've done is that uh, I have selected, so we have created this ledger called cash payment, right? So this is fine. And uh, I have now selected manual. The moment I select manual, it says, do you want to prevent duplicate? So I've said prevent duplicate. So let us see what happens. Okay. And rest everything is going to be the same. Uh, is use effective date, allow zero value transactions. Now zero value, what is this zero value transaction? Now this is this extra uh, option that you are getting in Tally Prime. And uh, this, this uh, allow zero value transaction, if you see in Tally ERP, it is, it is a global uh, uh, option uh, where you need to enable in F11 feature. Now I come to F11 feature and when you come to accounting feature, if you come here, see you have this option called enable zero value transaction. So when I make this as yes, any, in any voucher, see normally in a voucher, I'm going to capture the transaction with a value because I need to impact my uh, books of account, right? But then is the, I mean like, uh, if I don't mark this as uh, yes, then tally will not allow you to save any voucher without with zero value that means you your debit ledger will not have any value your credit ledger will not have any value so if there is no value tally is not going to save that voucher now when you come here and make this as enable zero value transaction as yes then tally will allow you to capture the transaction again we will when we get into the accounting we will discuss in detail about zero value transaction just for your uh, curiosity uh, i would say that why would anybody wants to have a zero value transaction right so in in a particular voucher for example if you see uh, i have this buy one get one free right or i would want to give some sample so i want to give a sample through a delivery note Right. So now when I'm going to give a particular uh, uh, item or a product of mine as a sample to somebody, I cannot charge anything, but I need to keep a record of what all material or how much of material that I've given as sample. So in those uh, use case scenarios, the zero value is going to be very, very helpful. So one thing, remember in ERP, it's a global uh, option that is there so that for every voucher type you can have the zero value transactions and slight variation or improvement that is brought in in tally prime is that uh, you can choose whether you want to use a zero value transactions for the specified vouchers so that's that's that extra thing that you have here and then uh, mark voucher type as optional. We have already seen narration. We have already seen the same thing. Provide narration for each ledgers. We have seen the same thing, right? So uh, this is for track additional cost for purchase. You can see my uh, previous uh, video in the advanced section or the advanced playlist. I had uh, explained there's the video where I've covered about the impact of uh, additional cost of purchases. Uh, I have covered so and also we will cover in the upcoming sessions so this is no so here again I have said enable default accounting allocation I have made it as no all right and uh, if you come to my sales local also I have created exactly the way we have created in this thing so here what I have done I have said yes I want to enable the default ledger rest everything is going to be the same thing I come here and you will again see the, the, the same kind of experience that we saw in ERP is going to be the same thing. So there is no change in this particular thing. Again, you have print uh, voucher after saving, this option is there, right? So now what happens? So I have selected, if you just see, uh, I have selected cash payment as manual uh, voucher entry. So what happens, let us see. So I come to uh, vouchers right and then i'm going to select my f5 payment so if you notice here you see here this is my last saved voucher local sale exactly the way we saw in erp all this uh, you know predefined 
masters are auto populated in my sales local and if you capture the transaction the way we just now saw in erp it is going to behave the same way so there is no change in your prime the experience is going to be the same thing but now what i want to do i want to now select a cash payment voucher so i'm going to press f5 again it is going to be the same whatever is the voucher type that you have created and the default voucher type tally is going to list out so whenever you are going to use this voucher type you will now identify what is the nature of payment for this particular voucher so i'm going to say cash payment when i say cash payment by default it gives you the number and now i can go and change this number here all right so that's the manual uh, voucher number so otherwise it is going to be the uh, the experience is going to be the same thing so this way this way now if you if you see that uh, for whatever reason if you want uh, a user defined voucher type uh, for uh, better tracking or for better review or for better uh, verification or for better checking so independent voucher type will really help you uh, i hope uh, that this uh, session was uh, helpful to you especially for the beginners uh, who, would, who would not know that you know i mean like uh, i can't uh, or i can i create the question of can i create a voucher type of my own for uh, different reason that i have just now explained so i hope this is uh, this was helpful and uh, in the next session under the basic playlist now we will see uh, we will pass a couple of transactions uh, for uh, uh, each of the voucher type including the voucher type that we have now created as a user defined voucher type and then we will see how to capture the data and the moment you capture these vouchers how automatically your financial statements are getting updated so thank you all uh, for staying till the end so as usual if you are not subscribed kindly subscribe you can share this uh, videos to your friends and colleagues so that they can also get benefited out of it thank you all see you until the next session thank you very much